it's a new way of, uh, of creating a city. It's a, it's a dynamic city, it's not a static city. And floating urbanization is a very good way to have flexible and climate robust urbanization in these vulnerable areas. With almost half of the country below sea level, the Netherlands is especially vulnerable to climate change. In het verleden. There is a long history of flooding events here, going back as long as people can remember. In 1953, the Netherlands suffered its worst disaster in 300 years, when the dikes protecting the country were breached by a storm surge and exceptionally high spring tides. The flood came in the night without warning, killing more than 1,800 people. 200,000 square kilometers of land were swamped and nearly 50,000 cattle drowned. Forty years later, the authorities faced another near-flooding event. In 1993, but even more in 1995, the water was so high that the authorities, the mayors and the governor decided to evacuate the whole area. In just our municipality alone, more than 18,000 people had to leave their homes, their animals and their belongings. They had to leave everything behind. With the effects from climate change, the Netherlands are facing a new challenge. The current predictions are that the sea level around the Netherlands could rise from between 65 centimetres and 130 centimetres by the end of the century. The main problems we have in the Netherlands with respect to climate change is for one flooding, uh, and we are capable of coping with that problem. The water supply might become an issue, so fresh water supply, because we have, might have droughts, droughts in the summer period. And our most concern is about nature. Is nature able to, uh, let's say, adapt to it, climate change? And our cities, are they really climate proof in terms also of flooding, heat stress, etc., uh, energy use and so on. So these two, nature and the built environment, we do feel we have to invest in in the years to come, substantially. The municipality West Marzenval has become a test bed for new ideas to meet the challenges of sea level rise and flooding. In the village of Marsbommel, people are experimenting with different kinds of houses that will allow them to stay in their homes when water levels rise. The gemeente West Marzenval. West Marzenval is situated between two major rivers. That means that if the water rises and the dikes aren't high enough, then we need to evacuate. That is the reason why we built a number of houses in the village of Marsbommel. People then don't have to care about floods because when the water rises, the houses will rise together with the water. In Marsbommel you have two types, you have floating houses and amphibious houses. Um, the, 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 the type of house is the same, but the floating houses are always floating and amphibious houses are only floating when water is coming up. The spaces you can build now in, in the Netherlands are uh, with uh, very weak and soft soils. So uh, the comparison between building on water, very stable on water, uh, of building uh, in the polders uh, of the Netherlands uh, will be uh, the same in future. And I think perhaps building on water will, will be more interesting than building on the land. interest for, uh, for floating urbanization is uh, from the municipalities. You see that a lot of uh, municipalities want to experiment with this new kind of uh, urbanization. So that are, are our biggest uh, clients right now. Rotterdam uh, um, wants to experiment uh, for maybe building in the, uh, in the city port, in the old city port. Uh, the city of Amsterdam and the city of Almere wants to uh, build in the, the, the big lake uh, above them, the Markermeer. So, um, yeah, municipalities are, are our biggest interest uh, right now. So one of the major opportunities that floating urbanization offers is that you can use the water as an energy source. Water is a very good uh, solar collector, so you can use heat pumps to uh, heat your buildings with heat from the water, but uh, hardly any impact on these uh, large water systems. At the same time, in summer, you can also use this water to cool houses. It's much more energy efficient and you no longer need fossil fuels to heat and cool your houses. And uh, we calculated that compared to conventional heating of buildings, it's a CO2 reduction of 60%. Our vision is 
that uh, in the future uh, we will live uh, um, in a more sustainable world and uh, lots of parts of Holland will live on water. Our vision is not that the whole Netherlands will be a floating city because that's not realistic, but uh, I think parts of Holland will be, will be very adapted to uh, um, uh, yeah, the surroundings, environment and the water and it, it will be a, a, uh, more harmony than uh, it is right now. What you're seeing is that many of the largest cities in the world, really the huge uh, metropolises, uh, they are located in uh, delta areas that are very vulnerable to flooding. At the same time you also see that these uh, mega cities, they are also uh, facing scarcity of land. So I think for all of these mega cities in delta areas, floating urbanization is a very good solution. We have to have more space for the water, but you have to have more space to live on as well, so why not combine it?